anterior um, shoulder pain as well. We've gone through the steps already in our manual therapy interventions to do some like pec work, some pec minor work, some subscap work. Um, he does upwardly rotate and protract pretty well overhead, but he does definitely have some forward head posture. And um, the last time we worked with him, uh, I did some scaling release and that significantly reduced uh, the symptom in the shoulder. So we're gonna go ahead and do that again today. And I'm gonna show you kind of the process that I like to take um, first with a little like active release therapy and then we're gonna work into like some really light Graston. Um, so just as a quick review, you know, obviously, hey Tommy, can you just pick your head up like that or just really lower it down? So you can see this is his SEM, right? It attaches to his uh, mastoid process and to his sternum. Um, so anything anterior to that is gonna be kind of his jugular vein and artery in there. So we're gonna kind of stick to the SEM and, and uh, lateral and posterior to that. So what I like to do is just have him relax and just rest his head in my hand. I got the towel kind of in between us. Um, it gives me a little bit of better grip on his head. And um, you know, I'll start working kind of right at that mastoid and just, you know, again, we'll get some, he has some tissue density, um, like protective tension here. So, you know, just working through these upper scalenes and you can see pretty easily how like he gets that twitching. Um, and that's how I know I'm kind of getting a good release that I'm speaking to that nervous system pretty well. Um, you know, again, so this is something I've done with him before. Uh, I would say pressure wise, I'm kind of in that mild to moderate range. You know, when I find that he's got a pretty nasty trigger point there. So I'll hold some steady pressure through there and move very, very slightly. Um, and then we'll, you know, so right now I'm keeping him kind of static. Obviously he's slightly lengthened, but since I've got him in a little bit of like flexion, I'm kind of trying to soften those uh, scalenes up a little bit. And they'll also down, they'll attach into this uh, first and second rib. So, you know, when you get some real, your, when your scalings get real jacked up, you can actually elevate that first rib and create some impingement or pinching down on that brachial plexus as it runs through your shoulder. So uh, that's why I think the scalenes, I mean, if you look at a referral, a pain referral map for scalenes, you'll see anterior shoulder, like herbs point, like that classic shoulder referral pattern, even into the bicep, as well as like that upper trap. And like I said, down that medial scapular border. So you can have a lot of implications for some scaling tightness. So, you know, when my traditional, you know, like shoulder uh, techniques aren't as effective as I like them to be, sometimes I'll, I will, or most times I will work up into the neck and uh, I will get some pretty good results there as well. So now I'm kind of moving into these more active techniques. Right now I'm just kind of hitting that upper trap, those anterior fibers. So I'm going straight side flexion with that. You know, Tommy's pretty good at relaxing, so he's saving me a beating here, right? And then for the scalings, really, when you go into the active technique, you need that lateral rotation to the opposite side and then extension. So um, I've shown him a self technique that he's been working on. I can definitely tell he's been doing it because he's a lot softer. If he's feeling rock hard through here, uh, that's kind of a little bit of a red flag that these scalings need a little bit of love. So um, he actually feels decent in here today. Um, oh, yeah, that's the spot right there. Uh, and he's been reporting a little bit of upper trap tightness. Um, so once I'm done with the scaling release, I'm definitely going to uh, sit him up and work on some upper trap stuff too with him as well. How are you doing, Tom? All right? Oh, yeah. You know, so any type of thoracic outlet symptoms, uh, if you're getting some, you know, ridiculous stuff going into the arm, um, definitely check your scalenes. This can this can be a, a hot spot for you, and it can definitely be something that gives you a ton of relief. Um, so now that I've kind of worked through a little bit of all of this, I'm going to get him into a little bit more uh, rotation away from that side. And, you know, again, he's got enough uh, emollient on here now. So I'm, again, through this area, be mindful of that jugular vein, but I'm just gonna do some really light grass in here. Um, you know, I would say this is on the very, very mild end of the spectrum in terms of pressure. I'm not pushing hard, the neck is sensitive. So, you know, just let's bring some blood flow here. You know, and this also helps me kind of clean out any of that grainy, that grainy tissue that he might have going on. 
So, you know, when I get into that behind that clavicle, that's where that scoop technique really, really works well. You can see I'm just kind of placing it in there and just kind of swiveling the bottom end of the instrument. Um, it's a really good way to kind of work in this area that can be very sensitive, but um, without, you know, really crushing it either. It's almost like you're sweeping it out. subclavius too. He definitely get, carries a lot of tension through all the stuff on this coracoid, his subclavius, the short head of his bicep. Um, so kind of work through a little bit of that as well. Nice. You doing alright, Tom? Yeah, cool. Alright, so... We're gonna switch, go to the other side. So again, redness here, no bruising. It's definitely warm to the touch though. Probably give you a nice little shave from here too. Yeah. <laughs> so again, I'll, I like to start up at this kind of SEM insertion right up on that mastoid process. And you know, sometimes taking a good history and just really getting to know your athlete can go a long way. If guys are having headaches, Check their SCM, check their deep neck flexors, you know, because they're getting headaches around the back. That SCM is attaching into this mastoid process. It shares a lot of attachment points for, um, you know, the extensor muscles that attach to like your occipitate. So um, it's definitely an area that can get really nasty and, and triggered down and, um, you know, doing a little bit of release work can even help reduce some tension headaches as well. I don't think he's a guy that's really had reported headaches to me, but that is something that um, has come up on a history with guys with similar or maybe even, um, you know, more tissue density problems in this area. It almost feels like your left side's worse. I think it's because I spent a little bit more time on that right side last time. Yeah, it could be. And by worse, I'm kind of mean like, this is really hard. I can really feel how, you know, I don't think I'm any more extended or flexed than he, than he was before, but you know, this, this tissue is very, very dense right now. So again, just kind of working into those active techniques. It's really just kind of like a pin and stretch, really. I'm just kind of pinning that those anterior fi uh, fibers of his upper trap down and just laterally flexing. And then we'll get into that scaling release too. Um, for guys that may be having some uh, TOS symptoms, when I do scaling release, I do like to kind of do this little bit of a first rib mob. So it's a bit of a breathing technique. So Tom, we can take a nice big belly breath in here, as deep as you can take it in and then blow it out nice and hard like you're blowing out a balloon. Good, all the way out, okay? So we're gonna do three reps like that. What I'm gonna do is kind of post him up. I try to use three fingers if I can, and I'm gonna stick it right above that clavicle and I'm gonna press straight down. Uh, I'm not trying to crush him. This is kind of like similar to that broomstick technique that you might have seen like on Mobility Wild with Kelly Starrett. Um, so what he's going to do is I'm just going to kind of, the breath is really what's going to mobilize that first rib and just kind of, you know, really kind of open up this attachment point. So take that nice deep breath in, Tommy. Deep, 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 deep. And then exhale hard. Good. And then as he exhales, I'm going to take a little bit of ground. Inhale again. Chest two. Getting that chest going too. Good. And exhale. Good. And it, one more time. In, 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 in. Exhale. Good. Okay. So again, this is, that one's kind of, uh, you know, that one hurts, you know, so it's not totally comfortable, but 
once you release scalings, it's a really good opportunity. You can access that first rib pretty well. And um, you know, if you're having some TOS or thoracic outlet symptoms, then definitely a first rib mode can, can definitely help with that. So we're gonna have Tommy sit up, sit on up. We're gonna face the wall here. And what we're gonna do now is just kind of lower the table down. We're gonna just work his upper traps. You know, in terms of alignment, he does have that forward head posture, but just tilt your chin all the way down to your chest. Okay, so if you, you know, his shoulder blades are really, I wouldn't say they're depressed. He's got pretty good, you know, he's got, he's probably in a little bit of excess upward rotation in just that resting posture, but overall, his shoulder blades move pretty well. Go ahead and do like a forward flexion test, just straight up over your sides. Go ahead, one more time, reach up way overhead. He's at a nice angle here, you know, that, that, uh, inferior border comes right up underneath the armpit he's got full full flexion so in terms of mobility in the shoulder he's pretty good so we're going to work into some active release techniques for both his upper traps um, for this one i like the you know i've coached him up on this before so basically what we're going to do is we're going to time this up i'm going to start kind of at that that uh, uh superior uh origin point and kind of work down towards that uh that scapular border right that that um superior medial border of his shoulder blade um, whereas levator attaches into this can definitely be a hot spot, especially guys with forward head posture. So he's going to rotate away and then chin down to chest as I work my way down there. Okay, and we're going to do about six strokes um, in that direction. So go ahead, Tommy, ready? And down. So we're kind of timing it at the same time. So we're both hitting there at the same time. If someone's in a lot of like elevation, this is a really good technique to open up this upper trap. He's kind of sitting neutral, but for him, he definitely carries a lot of tension through here. And, um, giving him a little bit of relief and just improving his tissue quality here is, is really important. Okay, back up. Okay, and down. Nice. Again, you see that twitching? I know I'm getting a good release there. That's enough pressure. Good. Nice. Back up. And again. And down, 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 down. Nice. Let's go one more. Hold and one more. Ready? Sweet. Okay, stay in that position. All right, so now we kind of work through some with my hands. We're gonna come right in here and just follow this up with some Graston. Get way up, getting into his mastoid. So he's really crunchy through here. So this is where I also like to do a little bit of that scooping technique. I'm sorry if I'm blocking the, the view here, but I'm just holding the instrument down and just kind of swiveling that. Oh yeah, that's the spot. Crunchy, crunchy, crunchy. Okay, there's a lot of fibrotic tissue through here. So, you know, Graston's definitely my go-to in those situations. All right, Tommy, let's hit the other side. So we're gonna do the same thing, just other, other direction. Okay, six of them, go ahead, rotate and down. Back up. And down. And I don't know if you can notice this, but you can see I really started kind of in those medial fibers and I'm as each stroke goes, I'm kind of working my way out over this cap. And then even as you get out to this lateral band, you could probably just switch him and go to straight side flexion, but he's doing a pretty good job right now with what we're doing. So I'm just gonna keep it there. And I did a lot of those side flexion techniques when he was laying on his back. God. Okay, one more. You can even see a little bit of the remnants of a cupping session that we had done. Probably even finish him off with a little bit of cupping today too. All right, so let's just go into that same position, slightly lengthened, so repeating that same process, and then we'll probably finish the session up with some uh, static cupping in this area. Yeah. So a little bit of static cupping, negative pressure therapy. Uh, I had already done some Graston in this area as well, but uh, for me, you know, doing my traditional compressive uh, soft, soft tissue therapies first, and then kind of on a case by case basis, I like to go to the cupping as a finisher. Um, for, for Tommy, he definitely carries, like I said before, a lot of tension in that upper trap. 
area. So you can see what I did here was really just kind of, um, you know, follow that scapular border here. And then I just put a cup medial to that and just superior to that on both sides. And I'm just gonna leave that static for about five minutes. Um, you know, my cupping set is a manual pump. It's just, it's pretty light pressure, I'd say. Light to moderate, it's two pumps out of each cup. Uh, and then we're gonna leave it, we're gonna leave it at that. You know, like I said, three to five minutes, nothing really that much longer. Um, but this is a really cool little finisher. And so my, my kind of uh, opinion on the cupping is that it's a great modality, you know, for, for some people, they don't like the, the dark circles that it leaves. So, you know, I'll, I'll try it out with guys once and if they like it and they respond favorably to it, then I'll, I'll do it, you know, maybe once a week with them. Um, but, you know, I kind of leave it to them. Um, it is a traction force compared to a compressive force. So it's definitely a nice way to mix it up and kind of talk to the nervous system on a little bit different level. And you could have even seen, hopefully I caught that on the camera, um, that middle trap just kind of twitched out and released, uh, which is really cool. Um, and again, with that static cupping, it definitely saves my hands uh, a little bit, bit more beating. And, you know, right talk to my athletes first. Make sure that this is something that they like and they respond well to. And as long as they're, you know, in line with it and they don't mind those dark circles, you know, I'm all for it. I think it's a, a great modality. It's non-invasive. Um, it's easy to do, and it really does give some great results, even if that's anecdotal. Um, so thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you guys next time in the recovery lab.